It is often said that women don't need to change their voices to be taken seriously. It's just a matter of embracing the power that's already there. Good morning and welcome to today's episode of Women Empowerment Program, being organized and sponsored by the Rule of Law and Empowerment Initiative, also known as Partners West Africa Nigeria P1. My name is Nkem Okereke, your host for this program. And I'm also here with my co-host Ijoma Iwe. Today's topic is focused on shaping the voice of females from the girl child to the woman. It is a known fact that a lot of factors affect the self-realization of women. If we seek gender equality, there should be a conscious effort for the girl child to be self-aware. With our guests today, we shall discuss how women can speak up for themselves, stand out, and succeed. Right now, we will go on a short break. And when we come back, we'll continue this discussion with our guest. Remember to like and share so that other friends can participate in this conversation. Please stay tuned. Welcome back to the show. Our guest for today is the Senior Executive Program and Project Coordinator with Women's Rights Advancement and Protection Alternative Rapper. In the past 12 years, she has consistently worked with and provided technical support to rights-based approach NGOs, intervening in cross-cutting issues of gender, financial inclusion of women and girls in agriculture, small, micro and medium enterprises. Please welcome with us this morning, Miss Yemisi Nathaniel. Good morning, Mani. Welcome to the Good show. Good morning, Ijoma. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Okay. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you, Ma. Ma, so we'll begin with our first question of the day. I would like to find out from you your understanding of shaping the voices of women and why do you think it's important? Thank you, Ijoma. I would want to classify voice into biology and social classification mind. Uh, the biology, I would say, is the sound that we make either as an animal or as a human, mm -hmm. which is aided by our larynx that gives voice to every human and animals. And even in the biology, uh, biologically, voice is as a result of an expression. Even a baby expresses, uh, comes out with a voice, mm. a sound, mm. in order to show that we are expressing something. The next one is social. And that's, I think, what we're looking at today. And that's a particular opinion or attitude expressed. E.g., you want to express your opinion, your views, you want to express your com or maybe comments or feeling about an issue, mm. or you want to have an input in an ongoing issue, vote or be voted for. All of these are giving voice. And why we are talking of giving voice 
to women is because ab initio before now uh women are classified among those who are not structurally included right. sort of uh they are more or less uh we call it vulnerable groups mm -hmm. and uh, most of the time they are not able to express their voice yeah okay thank, thank you, you very much so yes you said that women are structural structurally not included are there other factors that hinder females voices from being heard yes apart from not being structurally included what else is preventing females from being heard mm. hmm. almighty social norms okay. traditions which are entrenched in patriarchal structural systems mm -hmm. cultural and religion Honestly, most of this are what really impedes on women's voice. For instance, some, there are some cultures that states that a woman's voice must not be loud. You must have a tone of speaking. Mm -hmm. You cannot voice up. Mm -hmm. It looks like maybe they might, they might call it disrespect mm -hmm. to raise your voice. So there are so many issues that have to do with norms and traditions and culture and even majorly religion that had dwell, I mean, dwarfed the voices of women for age, for mm. ages now. Yes, uh, I would say, basically, whenever they come here for discussions about uh, building up the woman or feminism and all, we mm. say cultural and the traditional norms, they always come up, they always come up in, in discussions and it feels like it's being spoken about very often and no actions are being taken. Mm -hmm. Do you think actions are being taken about them? Action have been taken. And one of the actions is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. Because whatever we're saying here is going to places. And even the puppet, the, those in charge, the actors who are in charge will also hear what we're doing today. So awareness is being created, including what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. There are so many civil society organizations CBOs, who does nothing other than sensitizing on the fact that culture and uh, 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 custodians of culture are included in development processes. Mm -hmm. For instance, so many of these uh, violence against women and girls elimination programs and projects are targeting uh, leaders of faith and culture to ensure that they could ensure that they even use the religion to give voice to women. Mm. So what are we trying to do? We are ensuring that more of uh, voice amplification is given to women while mm. we, don't, we do not downplay religion or culture, yes. Yes. but we bring the actors into the amplification uh, programs and projects mm. that we are doing. So mm. honestly, it might not be where, where we are going, but we have left where we are. Mm. Yes, I agree. It is going to. It's, yes, we are moving actually, but it feels like it's when a what's that thing that goes when a tortoise is walking. Mm -hmm. Yes, very slow movement. I would say slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while, but I, I okay, hope yeah. we'll get there. Jamal, do you have a question to ask him? Sir? Yes, ma'am. The uh, next question is: wanted to find out from if there are structures in place, formal, informal that is aimed at molding and shaping young females. Do, we, do you think we have such structures? Honestly, there are formal. Let's start from informal, okay. from the home. Thank you, ma'am. We have the ecosystem. We have the home, we have the family, mm -hmm. we have the society, and we have the community. Mm -hmm. Already, there are voice amplification going on. Okay. It's just that the mother can only do as much as he knows mm -hmm. or she knows. Mm -hmm. So there have been different programs that involve women in the communities, okay. which is also assisting them in shaping the voice of mm -hmm. their children. We'll get there later, yes, talking yes. about intergenerational uh, learnings. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're saying here is there are informal. The, there is no child born into a family who will not be trained in some form. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's, it's now training the mother to understand that the way you went, we should try and not go the same way for them to now shape their daughter's voices. Mm -hmm. Then we have the church. Like I said, we have the mosques. The mosques like I said, mm -hmm. they are already getting engaged in this advocacy. And 
they are also beginning to see some gender uh, stereotypes and norms mm. that needed to be addressed. Also, let's look at even informal too, culture. Mm. We have some chief's wives and the uh, palaces that are now centers, informal centers for referral of gender-based violence. Mm. Here in FCT, mm. I can mention a few of them. Mm. So what are we then saying? Even culture is assisting to shape the voice of a mm. young woman. Now let's get to formal. Formal will start from schooling. Mm. There are so many programs in schools. There are some CBOs and CSOs that go to school now. There are clubs in schools that is ensuring that voice is given to young women. For instance, uh, this is not about uh, talking about my organization, but we had a program that we did on COVID-19, mm. uh, ensuring that girls uh, are, are I mean, re-enrolled re and retained and they finished, they completed their education. Mm. Education, actually finishing WAEG from 2020 till now. So these are ways of raising girls and shaping girls' voices. Now they know a bit of MHPSS, which they may not have known if not for that project. It's not only rapper that does this. Mm -hmm. So many other civil society organizations yeah. are going to schools mm -hmm. and working with girls to ensure that they grow up, which are very, very vital. When we, most generally when we know that even going to court, most of them don't want to, mm -hmm. they most of them cannot afford to. Mm -hmm. So when their own community is able to hold them accountable, then we will see that there will be change within those communities. And I want to say they are doing as much as they know. Mm -hmm. That means there had to be enough mobilization, mm -hmm. enough uh, uh, awareness. Welcome back. We've been having an interesting discussion with our guests in the house and she's given us good explanation on how the voices of women can be heard and how culture can also support for women voices to be heard. But before we went on the break, you told us how the formal, informal sector or the, the formal settings have been promoting women's voices. And you talked about some of the laws that have been passed and assented to. But we want to also find out from you. Yes, these laws are there, but do you think that with the, the, the laws there, do you think people respect women's rights? And what do you think can be done about it? Thank you, Jama. Principally, when there is a law, there is uh, a reason to get people to be accountable. Mm. And now, whether the, those people are now accountable or not, now depends on all of us. Okay. The women's rights advocates, the civil society organization relevant, the C CBOs, the, ju the judicial system itself, the law enforcement agents, mm. everyone, their hands, their hands are to be on the deck. Number one, to ensure that the rights are respected. Mm. To stand against the law of a country is to abuse that country. Mm -hmm. If you know what law means, yeah. uh, most of these uh, Western worlds, they are systemic because they've allowed laws to rule them. Mm -hmm. And so our laws are made. Our judicial system is not just meeting and going to court and ensuring our legislators are ensuring laws are approved only for them to be book on to be put on the shelf. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be respected. So the more the yeah. more perpetrators we can get, mm -hmm. the more people have to justice is secured mm. on issues that have to do with women's rights, the more they will have to respect it. Yeah. Nobody wants to respect anything until there are samples. Yeah. So we continue to make samples over samples upon samples, irrespective of whose who's oars is guard. Mm -hmm. Please, let's mark that. Let it not be that uh, the, law, the law is effective mm -hmm. when it comes to uh, somebody who is not a uh, quote and unquote, uh, having uh, a godfather somewhere, then when it is certain people, in quotes, then the law is no longer effective. If we go on that way, then there's nobody that's going to respect women. If uh, a, a big man's daughter is abused by another big man, would they have allowed it to slide down? No, mm. it doesn't happen. Will anybody no. have sweep it under the carpet? Mm -hmm. So let it not be a question of, Oh, where is, uh, is this of a social status? Mm -hmm. uh, want to go and finish mm -hmm. it? Want to go and uh, settle it at home? And also, parents have to be educated. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. continual education of parents. Because most of the time, they are the one that would even tell the lawyer that even want to do a pro bono, pro bono on their case that they don't want to do yeah. any case. They mm -hmm. want to settle out of court. Yeah. How do you settle a person's dignity okay. out of court? So these are issues that brings lack of respect for mm -hmm. yes, right. yes, Because if a parent is saying, oh, I don't want my child in that social media, I don't want that... Then who, who is going to be held mm -hmm. accountable? accountable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Yes, we will also look at what others outside here think about a promotion of women's rights and how to shape the voices of women. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Oge, and I have here with me. Tessie. And you're welcome to another episode of Women Empowerment. So just a quick one, Tessie, and what do you think can be done to encourage more women and young girls, you know, to speak up on issues that affect them in the society? Okay, for me, aside um, the fact that young girls need to be caught at a young age, mm -hmm. um, that's building them up from the home, which is the responsibility of the parents. Yeah. Another way in which uh, women can do this is um, that women from all walks of life can form alliances around shared interests mm -hmm. and those broader coalitions can help in the critical process of addressing issues um, such as um, low self-esteem, mm -hmm. no confidence. Mm -hmm. It can help address issues around surrounding women like this. Thank, okay. you. Thank you very much, Tessie. You're welcome. My name is Joy Edu. Basically, I think um, creating a safe space for them. Mm -hmm. When I when I say a safe space, I mean a place where you can voice out mm -hmm. and whatever you say will not be said to the next person, or your identity will not be revealed to the media, mm -hmm. and um, they, they, whatever you say will not be used to judge you. I feel if such spaces are created for women and girls, mm -hmm. they will feel more comfortable mm -hmm. to air out their um their, the, views? their views and um any form of abuse that they have encountered in their life mm -hmm. and such spaces can be created in their workplace in their schools and probably their neighborhood mm -hmm. and um there are also platforms on social media like anti holly's room for teens that they can also go and air out their own um grievances so i feel if such spaces are created such safe spaces are created more young girls and you to voice out if they are being abused or violated. Thank you. Have you here with us? Better to you. What we can do to empower young girls in our society is that we need to be there for our children. Mm -hmm. Parents, wards, guardians, teachers, they need to show interest in the young girls because when you show interest and you're there for them, you create a safe space, a safe environment for them to speak up on issues that affect them. So imagine if you are you travel for a long period of time you have a ward or a daughter at home and you have not reached out to ask them how they are faring and how they are doing they will feel very distant from you and if there are any issues that is affecting them they will be afraid to speak up so if you show interest in your children in your wards or in your daughters they would be more confident in themselves and they would be able to speak up on issues and even identify other issues in your environment that you need to pay attention to. So I think that's how we can empower our young girls to speak up. Thank you. Hi, and we have here with us Joyce Saza is my name. Well, for me, firstly, we need to educate these women and give them the relevant opportunities they deserve to boost their morale as well as self-esteem. Secondly, we need to support women-run businesses. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, we need to support organizations that empower women. Fourthly, we need to also advocate for female colleagues in various establishments. And lastly, we need to place them in leadership positions mm -hmm. and give them headship positions. Thank you. Okay. We have seen what they have said. We have seen what our, what the people we have outside have said on the shaping of the voices of women and what needs to be done. Ma'am, you remember you said in, in initially that there, that what hinders women's voices is, uh, to, that there is this structural exclusion of women. It is, it is there, but it is not seen, but it is there. So I, w I would want to ask, how do you think it will affect women and their inclusion? How do you think it will shape a woman 
or her voice if she is included? When a woman is included, or when women are included, we will have more women champions mm -hmm. to mentor others. Mm -hmm. We're looking for political champions, economic moguls in women, to champion younger women and to shape their voice. You need to have a woman in place to be able to do that for another girl. So when women uh, are empowered, mm -hmm. automatically there are more mentors. Mm -hmm. There are more champions. There are more stories. Some of us are still listening and being motivated by the stories of the stories of Fela's mother, exactly. the stories of uh, uh, the salt woman, uh, Margaret Epo. Epo. Mm -hmm. I mean, these stories are ever fresh. So, uh, how about we have uh, current uh, women champions women, yes, all over? Honestly, it will automatically generate more girls mm -hmm. and their voices will be shaped. Mm -hmm. And next is uh, when we have women in positions, it will call for more gender-friendly policies. And uh, you will see that uh, one of our women in the House of Senate is continually bringing back GEOB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because we wear the shoes and we know where it hurts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, Thank you. Yes, I also like to find out from you um, whose responsibility, responsibility is it to shape the voices of women? Honestly, I'll say everyone. Okay. But starting from women's rights organizations, okay. women groups, mm -hmm. relevant civil society organizations, mm -hmm. educationists, teachers, mm -hmm. parents, mm -hmm. governments, mm -hmm. men, he for she, establishments, mm -hmm. and most importantly, women themselves. So we say everybody. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is responsible, mm. everyone, including a parent. Everyone. All right. So I. So it's just for us to understand that when women women's voices are heard, or when they are able to stand for themselves, mm. we can come close to achieving gender equality. Yeah, that's what I would say. Mm. So not, little, not just gender equality development as a nation exactly mm -hmm. exactly development mm -hmm. as a nation because then we'll be flying with our boat wings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so how do you think girls can be empowered how do you think girls can learn how to stand up for themselves and to how to always speak up for themselves how to always succeed in what they do now we have Women, women meeting that you know is going to affect the voice of your child, mm. the, the, the voice of your daughter, that is going to affect the future of your family and your ecosystem. Bring that cheer and give it to them free. Find a way to give something to the cause of women's voice amplification mm. by all means. Thank you very much, ma'am. Ijama, do you have anything to ask her before we go? No, I think she's really explained everything we need to know. But the one point I picked from what she said is that everybody is involved in ensuring that women's voices need to be heard. Everybody. Yes, and I also want to say that it's not just about uh, passing these laws. Mm -hmm. It's about advocacy, sensitizations, education mm -hmm. that aims at ensuring effective implementation of these laws. Thank you very much, Ms. Yemisi Nathaniel. And thank you, our viewers, for taking our time to join us today on this conversation, Shaping the Voice of Women. Kindly join us again next week, Friday, still at 11 a.m. as we discuss another interesting topic still on women empowerment. Remember to always put topics you would want us to discuss here on women empowerment so that others can learn. For now, I would say have a wonderful weekend.